Good morning. It's good to welcome you all here into this <clears throat> fifth Sunday in Lent. We are finishing up the Lenten season. Next Sunday will be Palm Sunday. I'm glad to see you all here. Um, I assume you all got blown in as well. When I tried to get out of my car when I got here, my door just whoop shut. I'm like, oh, well, this is going to be interesting. But uh, it's good to be able to gather together, no matter the weather, and uh, worship our Lord. We begin our time together with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We Lord, the resources of our neighbors are hungry and cold. Give us the grace to be generous to all who need our help. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep scoring our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, and for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to be singing verses 1, 2, and 7 of My Song is Love Unknown. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Turn us again, O God, of our salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. May your justice shine like the sun, and may the poor be lifted up. Together, let's uh, pray our prayer of the day. Oh God, 
With steadfast love, you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now turn to our readings. The first reading comes from the prophet Jeremiah, uh, verses, uh, chapter 31, verses 31 through 34. The Judeans in Babylon blamed their exile on their ancestors who had broken the covenant, covenant established at Mount Sinai. Here the prophet looks to a day when God will make a new covenant with the people. There will be no need to teach the law because God will write it in their hearts. We're getting with verse 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judea. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall, they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive them their iniquity and remember their sin no more. Let's read responsibly. Uh, Psalm 51, verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, and in your great compassion blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sins ever before me. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me, and would have me no wisdom deep within me. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. The second reading today comes from the book Hebrews, chapter 5, verses uh, 5 through 10 using priestly imagery and references to the Old Testament, the author explains how Christ lived in trusting obedience to God. And so God made Christ the source of our eternal salvation. Beginning with verse 5. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest. He was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. As he says... Also, in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order, the order of Belzezek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience th through what he, had, what he suffered. And having been made perfect... He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obeyed him. I have, and having been designated by God a high priest according to the, old, the order of Melchizedek. Here is the reading. 
I invite you to stand as we sing our gospel verse. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus entered Jerusalem for the last time to celebrate the Passover feast festival. Hear Jesus' words about seeds planted in the ground turn the disaster of his death into the promise of a harvest in which everyone will be gathered. Verses 20 through 33. <clears throat> now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who is from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come out for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I invite the kids to come up. You know, in the old church a long time ago, they used to have men sit on one side and girls sit on the other. You're kind of just naturally doing it, huh? I can kind of see you guys. Hey. Oh, they don't want to sit by you? Or is it you don't want to sit by them? A little of both? <laughs> Maybe best not to answer. All right. Well, <clears throat> When I went to kindergarten, I did not know how to read. And I would look at the books they had there, and oh, I wish so much I could read them. I had to wait for the teacher to read them to us. And boy, I wanted to read them for myself. But in that, in that time, they didn't teach us how to read yet. You guys are on a faster, faster schedule than we were. And I remember when I was so excited when I finally, finally, finally learned how to read. But then I was so frustrated because, sure, I could read, but there's a bunch of other books I wanted to read and I couldn't do it. Why was there some books that I couldn't read? I just started learning how to read, but there's some books that, oh, nope, couldn't do it yet. I needed to learn some more, didn't I? I had to learn, I had to practice. I had a whole lot of learning to do before I could read all the stories I really, really wanted to read. One of which was Little House on the Prairie. I have my whole series, they're all ragged and looking sad. But I love to read those books. There are some things that we just, that come naturally to us. And there are some things that, you know, they require us to learn and to practice. Right? 
What's something that you have to practice in order to get better at it? Can you think of anything? Cooking, you know it. I don't want to tell you about the first thing I baked, how it turned out. It wasn't pretty. Throwing, absolutely. I'm guessing you guys, some of you could probably throw much better than me. Any other guesses? Sports. Yep, you have, to, you have to get a lot of practice in sports to get better, for sure, for sure. Piano, absolutely. Guitar, yep. What's that? And shooting, absolutely. There are all kinds of things that we want to know about, want to learn, and we recognize it's just going to take practice for us to figure this stuff out so that we can do it better and better and better, right? And, well, and that's so true for piano and shooting and sports, but you know, it's also true when it comes to our faith. There are things that God asks us to do <coughs> that we're not going to get real good at, we're not going to get better at unless we practice unless we keep trying, right? Can you think of something that God really, 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 really hopes that we would, we would be practicing? Friendship, absolutely. That does take practice. Love, uh-huh, absolutely. You, faith, absolutely, woohoo, this side is just bringing it. Gold stars all around. You bet. There's all these wonderful things that God wants for us and wants us to be able to express, and it takes practice for us to get better at it. Just like it, you know, it would take a lot of practice for me to be decent at throwing a ball, because <laughs> I haven't practiced for a long time, right? It takes practice for us to learn better how to be kind to others, how to watch out for other people, how to be a good friend, how to be a good sister or brother. All those kinds of things, right? And so God's hoping that we can practice all this good stuff and that we don't give up even when it's hard. Because <laughs> there's sometimes, boy, we might get discouraged. I, I remember learning a piece on piano when I was in third grade and I just could never get one section right. And I just wanted to give up. But my piano teacher, whose name was Faith, ironically, said, just, just keep at it, keep at it. And sure enough, I got it. I was able to play it in my recital. It was pretty awesome. So we ask God to help us practice all those good things that he hopes for us too. Okay. All right. We're going to practice something right now. Mm -hmm. There are people out there who think you guys are awesome. Yeah, look at that. Hey, look at that. There's not a single face out there that's not going, you guys are awesome. Okay, except for one, Jim, <laughs> calling you out. <laughs> they think you're awesome. And I hope that you, you know, that you think these folks are pretty, pretty great too. Think so? Well, let's let everybody know. We're going to practice letting people know this. So what we're going to do is together we're going to say, God loves you and so do I. Okay, can we practice it? God loves you, and so do I. Okay, we're going to stand up. Ugh. All right, and nice and loud so that they hear us all the way in the back. We're going to remind them, okay? This is good practice for us. Ready? God loves you, and so do I. All right, thanks, guys. Head on back. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our rock and redeemer. Amen. I remember very, very well the day that we were given our instruments for band. Um, we're, my, dad, my dad was a teacher, and we were friends with most teachers, and so the band teacher knew me pretty well. And instead of asking me what I wanted to play, he informed me what I was going to be playing because he knew he could get away with that with me. But I was pleased. 
He sends me home with a tenor saxophone. That sucker was about as big as me at that point. And I bring that home, and by golly, I'm going to learn how to play this big old piece of metal. We could have a whole conversation about reeds. Oh, my gosh. And so I practiced, and I practiced. And I remember that first day in my bedroom, trying my hardest, practicing my little heart out. And I hear my dad come thumping upstairs. And I hear him talking to my mom. And he comes into my room. He says, yeah, I had to ask your mom what that noise was. And I said, well, I'm practicing, Dad. He said, yeah, I could hear you downstairs. He said, I'm sorry, honey, but you kind of sound like a sick moose. I'm like, well, boy, don't I feel encouraged. Thanks a lot, Dad. OK, maybe, he said, OK, maybe a sick goose instead of a moose. Thanks. Thanks so much. But I discovered a love for the saxophone and a love for music. And over time, I no longer sounded like a sick anything, but sounded pretty good. And I enjoyed it so very, very much. But it did take a horrendous amount of practice, something which my youngest does not appreciate in her life right now. I don't want to practice. Well, you're not going to get better. I know, unless I practice. Yes, exactly. We aren't able to really take something into our lives until it becomes a part of us unless we have time spent with it. It got to the point when um, I graduated from high school, I was able to play a variety of different saxophones. And you, know, you don't have to think about it anymore. There would be some fingerings as you learned it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so hard. I have to press down here and press up here and ah. But eventually, it just becomes natural, right? I don't even have to think about it. It just comes. And I was able to play and enjoy it. Of course, then I stopped playing. I wish I hadn't. I gleefully sold my poor old saxophone and went on with life because I wasn't a music major. When was I going to play again? Oh, I was so short-sighted. And I'm guessing, since I haven't practiced in more years than I want to admit, that I'd probably be back to the sick moose or goose period of uh, musical ability. In our first reading today, as the uh, Judeans who are living in exile mourn the fact that they uh, can't be home and think about how we're here because of the choices our ancestors make, the prophet casts a vision of a future. And he casts a vision of a covenant, a promise, a relationship between God and God's people that will be so great, that will be so, so wonderful, that they don't have to teach each other. They don't have to remind each other, know the Lord. They don't have to remind each other, remember who God is, remember what God did for us, remember to worship him. Instead, he says, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they will be my people. I will write it on their hearts. It will be so much become a part of them that they don't even have to think about it. It's written in their hearts. They carry it with them no matter where they go. And every time their heart beats, it sings my praises. Every time their, my, their heart beats, they remember that I am their God, and they are my people. A beautiful image of that sense of being together and being connected in ways um, that just fill life with such beauty. But of course, as I said to the kids, we recognize that we don't just instantly get there. It would have been wonderful for the exiles to have just gotten right there. They got back, got to go back to the homeland, got to go back and try to rebuild life and rebuild the temple. And guess what inevitably happens? They stray from the Lord. They come back. They're like, yeah, we're back. We're going to build the temple. We're going to make things right. And then they start to stray off again and have to be brought back. It takes time, and it takes patience, and it takes practice for us to embrace and really live in and live out of our calling to be God's people. 
I wish it was one of those things that just automatically came to us. That we just know how to do. We didn't have to learn how to breathe, right? Our, our bodies just kind of have that all worked out already. But I had to practice to learn how to whistle. We don't have to think about making sure that our blood is pumping through our bodies and getting to all the different places that it needs to be. But boy, I sure had to practice to learn how to ride my bike and work hard getting up those hills. In our gospel lesson, we have folks approaching Jesus' disciples. He is in Jerusalem, and of course he's gotten quite a name for himself. There's a lot of renown for him. And people are wondering. They're coming to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And people from all over now have heard about this Jesus character. And they're curious and they want to know. And so we, we're told that there's some Greeks who show up. And they figure out that Philip is one of the followers, one of the disciples. And they say, hey, sir, we, we want to see Jesus. And it seems pretty clear that in this situation, Philip isn't entirely sure exactly what he should be doing. Right? And so he goes and tells Andrew. He's like, I need help. I'm not sure what we should be doing here. And he goes to Andrew, and together they bring them to Jesus. Philip wasn't ready. He wasn't confident enough at that point to do that himself. He needed to go and get a little bit of help. And so they do indeed come to Jesus. And then Jesus says some really, really challenging things. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it will remain just a grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Reflecting the thought back then that a seed dies and then only then can it flourish into something else. So they indeed brought people to Jesus, but that didn't mean that they had totally gotten it, that they were totally clear. Jesus continues leading right up to the time when he is arrested. He keeps telling them, warning them, it's, it's necessary for the Son of Man to die, and then on the third day he will rise again. He has many passion predictions. He keeps telling them, right, in different ways, this is going to happen, and this needs to happen. And because of this happening, you will have life. And even in this episode, this moment of him trying to talk about it, they even hear this heavenly sound. They're not entirely sure what it was that they just heard. It's kind of like when I'm at home and I hear a sound outside and I'm like, okay, did a big truck go by? Did something hit the house? What is it? They're not sure. And Jesus says, this is for you. When I'm lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. We see, even after all those years of following Jesus, even after getting to hear these predictions, getting to hear the stories, see him healing, see him preaching, all these wonderful things, see him raise people from the dead, still his disciples struggle a bit. They still aren't always certain. They aren't always confident. They don't always just go, I know what to do. I know what to say. I know what's going on. They still struggle. They still question. They still need to grow in that. They still need that practice. And I think that's why Jesus has to say it again and again and again and again. I must die. And on the third day, I will rise again. He has to say that into their ears so many times and to the people around him. People at different stages of faith. For those Greeks who are hearing it for the first time, you know, we heard a little something and we want to know more. All the way to those who have been with him for almost from the very beginning. No matter what stage of faith and life that they are in, each one needs that encouragement and needs to work at it. I remember a number of years ago getting ready for Holy Week and Easter and feeling a little stressed, just a little bit. Our kids were much younger then, 
and they were asking me about the schedule and what we were doing, and I was telling them, oh, okay, I yeah, know, Monday, Thursday, and then you know, we'll do Good Friday, and then, then it'll be Easter, da, 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 and all this stuff. And I remember our oldest kind of looking at me with this puzzled look on her face. And she said, Mom, yeah, didn't we do that last year? I'm like, yeah, yeah, we did. Well, then why do we have to do it again? You already told us. I'm like, boy, wouldn't that be awesome if we just got told and that was all we needed, right? And boom, we were right there. And I said, why do I have to say to you several times a week, pick up your toys off the floor? I just, I, why shouldn't I just say it once and then you don't ever need to hear it again? Oh, mom. We need to hear again and again. We need to go through these things again and again because we need those reminders. We need that help so that we can get it. And there are some days when it can feel like, yeah, I am right there. I get it. I embrace this. God is, feels so close to me. And there's going to be other times when it seems like God is far away, when it's actually us who have wandered off, when we feel our, our faith is a tenuous thing. Can I trust this? Is this real? How do I feel about this? Right? We all are needing to grow in faith and receive that encouragement and receive the help of others all throughout our journey of faith. We are always in the process of learning. We are always in the process of being encouraged because this stuff <laughs> is challenging. It's far more challenging than uh, learning to play the saxophone now that was challenging. It took, it took a couple of decades for the divot in my bottom lip to finally go away. It takes practice. It takes years. It takes trust. And so, yeah, next Sunday, we're going to have Palm Passion Sunday. We're going to remember Jesus' triumphant entry, entry into Jerusalem. Have you heard that story before? Yeah, you have. Guess what? You're going to hear it again. Why do we need to hear it again? <laughs> practice. Thank you. Wow, I got to pay somebody off. And we are going to have Monday Thursday, and we're going to have Good Friday, and then we're going to come to Easter, and we're going to do all those things. And I'm hoping that everybody who can will come, because we need to hear it again. We need to hear it, and we need to relive it. We need to embrace it into our hearts again and again and again. Because just like those disciples, we need to hear again and again and again, I must die, and on the third day, I will rise again. And hear again and again why that matters and what that means for us. So yes, a couple weeks ago, I was going through our schedule with our younger one, telling her the schedule of services and what all we were doing. And, you know, I'm like, okay, no, on Monday, Thursday, yeah, yeah, Mom, I know what that is. And Good Friday, yeah, I remember what we do. I'm like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you do. I'm sure you do. I'm glad you remember. This is awesome. But you're going anyway. <laughs> Mom. Being a pastor's kid just makes you a little more honest about your feelings about these things. I said, nope, you're going to hear it again. I already know it. You're going to hear it again. Because I need to hear it. And I've been doing this for a lot longer than you have. <laughs> My parents, who have been doing it a whole lot longer than me, need to hear it. All of us need to hear it. To embrace it, to practice it, to live it, to embrace it. So that finally when that day comes, when we're gathered into God's kingdom, indeed it will be written upon our hearts. And we don't even have to think twice. But we will embrace the life that we're given. Someday I may just... Play the saxophone for you. It'll clear the room. <laughs> but no matter what, I'll keep telling you, Jesus died for your sake. Amen. We're going to sing, Now the Green Blade Rises, <coughs> verses 1, 2, and 4.
United in faith, let us make confession of what we believe. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're comfortable as we confess the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we receive the offering. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship, and inspire the creativity within all of us as we seek to follow in your ways. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Make us good stewards of what you've gifted us with. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. And bring wars to cease, Lord. We pray especially for the people in the Holy Lands and the people of Ukraine and any other places where there is war and violence. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in families and intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. And Lord, we lift to you all those who are in need of your strength, praying especially for Ryan, Roger, Linda, Cheryl, Barbara, Helen, Sharon, Clayton, Lorelai, Judy, Helen, Amy, Janice, Faye, Wanda, Karen, Alan, Gary, Dean, <clears throat> family and friends of Michael Hansen, for <clears throat> the family and friends of uh, Mike Mum, and for those of Pat Campbell Atkins. 
we lift these things to you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. <clears throat> God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of promise, <clears throat> we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially thinking of St. Patrick, missionary to Ireland, who we commemorate today. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O oh God. <clears throat> Mercy is great. Accompany us in our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us pray as our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Please be seated and uh, we have some announcements. <clears throat> um, you know that we post our, our uh, prayer requests every week and um, I just want to make two notes uh, one that's kind of sad and one that is a celebration um, for those of you who <clears throat> know Helen Iverson she's a member of our saviors she's been at the um, nursing home in Westbrook she's now been put on hospice so if you could be in prayers for her and for her family and friends and if you know her um, if you could maybe go and visit her that would be really really wonderful and then uh, I'm very grateful to say that uh, Darla Larson has asked to be taken off of our prayer list because she is in remission and doing very well. Thank you very much. And so I am just so happy um, to hear that as well. For our calendar of events, <clears throat> tomorrow is our newsletter deadline. And praise be to God, Betty's back. She had a great vacation and, we put, and she jumped into work immediately, poor lady. Mm. On Wednesday, our Savior's will, quilting will start. And again, and that uh, continues on Thursday, and that is open to everybody. Um, our usual Bible study at 9 a.m. Wednesday morning at English. We live stream it. We offer it again at 1 o'clock at Country View. And our Lenten service, our last one for the season, will be at English this week. Soup supper at 5.30, service at 7. Thursday morning is men's Bible study at 7 a.m., and then next Sunday is Palm Passion Sunday. Wow, it comes fast, so fast. And so English and our saviors will worship at 8.30, 9.30 Sunday school, and then we'll have worship here in Trinity at 10.30, and we'll have communion again, finally. We will be able to celebrate communion together. Um, the new devotionals for April, May, and June have come out. They're in the entryway, so I encourage you to take one of those. <clears throat> wow. And um, just a reminder as well that our mission of the month is for the food shelves. So if you have some non-perishable items to donate or some money that you're wishing to give this March, we really, really encourage that because there are matching funds in the month of March. And then, Ron, you had something you wanted to say? Yeah, I just We're glad that you guys were able to have a good mission trip down there. And we're grateful for everybody who supported you guys. <clears throat> Man, our whole family is fighting some sort of cold right now, so I'm not shaking hands today. <clears throat> All right, if there's no other announcements, receive the blessing. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, and renewed. God bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. <clears throat> Our sending hymn is, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing.